Okay, and then this fun technique I like to call the paint peel. This is a piece of plastic that I use whenever I'm art journaling and I stick it between the pages that I put it underneath the page that I'm working on when I'm painting and doing backgrounds so that I don't get my medium on the next page. And I don't wipe it off, I don't dry it off, I don't do anything with it, I just keep using it over and over and over. So it's got lots and lots of yummy paint. It's got splatters, it's got paint that, you know, came, acrylic paint that came over it, it's got inks, all kinds of fun things on here. Um, and it's just a plain piece of plastic, so you'd have to find yourself a sheet of plastic to use for this. Then what I like to do is take some regular double stick tape on a roll. So this is just regular two-sided double stick tape. And I put that down along my edge of my journal page that I'm creating. Oh, and I'm looking for just a really textured, interesting look. There's my double stick tape. I take my mat that's all nice and grungy and I find a place on it with colors that I like. So I like this spot right here. So I'm going to lay that down across that double stick tape and I'm just going to really burnish it down. Push and push and push. And then when I peel it up, ta -da! Look at all that that came off my mat that is so gorgeous. I mean, you couldn't create that if you tried. So, uh, and then if there's little pieces hanging off the edge, you can peel them away. And they're nice pieces to use too. So in this spot that didn't get any paint, I'm gonna lay that piece down and put it into place on the tape. You can layer them. No, I kind of like that the way that is, so I'm going to leave that. Really, really fun, and it's so pretty and interesting and unique to look at. Okay, so now I've got a little blank spot right here. If I want to fill that in, I'll just pick up a piece of that paint, peeled paint, and put it in place. Okay, so look at this cool border of paints and inks and look at how cool and interesting that is. And look how pretty it looks on your art journal page. So now what I would do is once I get my border all put on, I would take some matte gel medium and lightly brush over that whole thing, trying not to disturb it, but matte gel medium over it so that it'll stay in place, it'll hold down those pieces, it'll, um, you know, just kind of seal in that paint. But that's, that is my peeled paint border and I absolutely love it. So get a piece of plastic, find yourself a good thick piece of plastic. I don't really know where I got this one. You can get um, plastic for in the quilting section of a craft shop for um, cutting out stencils for quilting. You can use plastic from packaging. This may have been, in fact, I think this was a piece of plastic that was actually a 12 by 12 divider for um, in one of those kits or one of those containers that hold scrapbooking papers and you can divide them. I think this might have been a divider, but it's just nice, real heavy plastic. It works awesome as a page protector and then look at the bonus that you get. So give that one a try. And here's what the border looks like all completed, all stuck to my double stick tape. Look at how pretty that is. It's so interesting and textured and artistic and I just absolutely love it. Now I'm going to take some um, matte gel medium and I'm going to go around that edge. So I put my I put my plastic mat underneath and I'm just going to go really gently, really light-handed over all that painted tape. It's acrylic paint that's dried so it's not going to um, reactivate it's you know it's not a water soluble supply so it's going to stay put and the matte gel medium over it is just going to seal down all those little pieces of paint onto that border so 
that's what I'm doing is just putting some matte gel medium on my soft brush and going around that edge to seal it and then once it dries I'm ready to put a focal on this page and complete this artwork page so here's what it looks like completed and you can do this here's here's a really exciting thing you can do the same thing if you're a jelly plate person and if you're somebody who lets your layers and layers and layers build up on your jelly plate you can also do that on a jelly plate if you clean your jelly plate like me I like to keep mine clean and pristine so I don't I don't put it away with all the old junky paint on it I use it keep it clean but you can take and you can put layers on your jelly plate and let it dry and add another layer and let it dry and add another layer and let it dry and junk it up and do the same thing you can go over um, double stick tape with your jelly plate and it'll grab that chunky paint off of your jelly plate I would like to do it with my plastic mat from painting I prefer that that's just my thing and that's just because I'm like I said a neat jelly plate person so anyway this is really pretty and fun and funky so give it a try it makes an awesome border okay this next idea you may have seen it before because I'm definitely not the first person to show it um, it is a Dilutions Ranger product and I believe it is um, Diane Reevely that shows this or created this and it is a piece of lucite plastic with this cool funky edge and I use it a lot in my journals and I'll show you how um, and you can probably find videos where she shows it as well but then I'm I take it even a step further so I'm going to show that and and if you don't want to purchase one of these they're nice to have it's got a ruler on the side it's nice thick plastic so it's super heavy and easy and fun to use um, you can create your own you can do it on a piece of cardboard just take a pencil and draw a wavy line cut it out and use that I did another one on a piece of plastic that's used for like um, quilting stencils um, so I made this stencil one, the plastic one, longer, and that's if I have a bigger art journal. So you don't have to do it and then move it up, you know, to make your completed line. But this is the Ranger one. So I will put a um, put this in the uh, description, a link in the description box below if you want to purchase one. And now I'm going to show you how to use it. An open space where there's blank pages behind it and she likes to use this to create the illusion of a stacked page so you can border it either on the first one what I like to do is um, just do it with um, leaving the page fully completed and then drawing your line and now I'm going to color that area in and doodle it and then when I get to the next page I'm going to come in a little bit farther and put this down and you can do it at a different like this doesn't have to be equally like where you move it out an inch and they're even you can do that in fact you can do that right on this page to make it decorative you know something to color in like that but then when you come to the next page you can move this up so that the patterns don't meet up and it makes it really kind of interesting looking and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go in a little further and I'm going to move that center part of the pattern down on the page draw my lines and now what I'm going to do is take my scissors and cut that piece off okay so I've cut this out here is my piece that was on the end like this and I'm taking that off and I'm flipping it over and I'm going to add it in it's hard to see on here with it all being cream colored I'm going to add that in with a piece of um, drywall tape right there and flipped over so it makes this pattern not lined up with this pattern it makes it wonky and then what I'll have to decorate 
if you can see that I'll tip it up so it, you can see the shadow is is this page like this then when you flip this little tiny piece you're gonna have this page this cool section to decorate and then this last section to decorate and then when you close them like this they're all gonna lay one over the top of each other so you, you can see them so that's a really cool border idea and I'll show you in another book what I'm I'm taking that a step further as well okay so here is here is my first page and I've used that ruler to make those lines and to doodle it and I've used a stencil and I'm using paints on that so this whole page is going to be um, you know background and sayings and flowers and things and then what I do with the next page is I used my stencil and I put it down on my page and I stenciled out my design I freehand drew the stem and the leaves the stencil was only this uh, sunflower so I made this and this was on the full page so what I did was I took my scissors and I trimmed out the edge if you see my um, altered book video on uh, paper dolls I put girls on the edge and I use sewing patterns the same way so you're doing your edge and then you're trimming it out so now when I lay that down over the first page you can see the other sunflower behind it look how neat that looks when they lay one over the top of each other like that and then when you close this page what I've done with this page was just freehand drew a wild swirly design and see how when it lays over the sunflowers what that looks like and I've cut it out and now I'm going to decorate that part of the page and then this next part that layers it is cut out like a butterfly I haven't finished it but see how it lays one over the top and then the next one is a swirl and a dragonfly and when they all lay over each other look what they look like so when those are painted and doodled and those pages are completed look how fun this is going to be and with this piece from that I've cut off that was from this swirl here I'm going to put that on the end of my page like this as a tip out this way so that'll be really fun and interesting so that's a really just totally different take on what to do in your art journal so here's how my border page came out as you can see the pieces that I cut out into different designs on the edges overlap each other so each page kind of uh, becomes part of the next page and shows up on the other side so when you flip this open you have that and then this one turns and you have this that hides her face and a butterfly and the words you can fly and then you flip this one and you have this that says feeling melancholy and she's got a little tear cute border and then this one that says feel the sunshine with a uh, girl dancing in the sunflowers so that's what happens oh wait there's one more and then this one I sit and ponder the meaning of my life and I never find the answers so here is my my here are my pages that as you can see that last page goes right up to the edge and then the next page is cut and it overlaps and this one's cut and overlaps and this one's cut and overlaps and so on and so forth and then that's what you have so that's another fun border idea is bordering your pages with designs that you decorate and cut out to make this kind of a fun overlapping and another border idea this doesn't have an actual border around the page but I'm using the words that I journaled 
as a border. So I let them wrap around and let my writing kind of create a border on the page. So do your journaling around the edge to make a border. So there's another idea. And here are pieces cut out from magazine patterns. And um, I know Tisha Moore does that quite a bit too, where she takes bits and pieces of magazine uh, where you just find texture and color. In fact, that's, if you look really close, that is cereal, different kinds of cereal from an article about food. So, and this was um, a tapestry off of a rug on a floor. So those make really fun and interesting borders too, or pieces from magazines. So I hope this gave you some more border ideas. As I come up with more, I'll create another video. Um, I love doing borders and I love sharing my ideas with you. So hopefully these inspired you to create some fun and funky borders in your art journal.